Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to use the intermediate value theorem to prove that the function has a root in the given interval. To complete this problem, we'll evaluate the function at both ends of the interval, and then show that the graph of the function crosses the x-axis between these values. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to use the intermediate value theorem to show that the function f of x equals x to the fourth plus x minus three has a root on the interval one to two. So the first thing we wanna make clear is that the root of a function is a point at which the graph of the function crosses the x-axis. In order to use the intermediate value theorem to show that this function crosses the x-axis between one and two, we're going to need to plug 1 and 2 into the function, and then we'll talk about how this applies to the intermediate value theorem. So we're going to plug both 1 and 2 into our function. So we'll say f of 1 is 1 to the 4th plus 1 minus 3, which of course will just give us 1 plus 1 minus 3, which will give us negative 1. Then if we plug in 2, the other end of our interval, f of 2 will get 2 to the 4th plus two minus three, which will give us 16 plus two minus three, which of course is just 15. Now without thinking about it too much, what we could assume is that since the function has a negative value on one end of the interval at one, and a positive value on the other end of the interval at two, the graph has to cross the x-axis at some point in the interval, and therefore the function must have a root. But we haven't really proven it, and the only way we can prove it is with the intermediate value theorem. Which basically tells us that if you take a point here, A, and another point, B, along the x-axis, and you draw a graph, let's say it looks like this, the graph of a function, that A comes up to meet the graph at this point, and if we go over here to the left, we can say that this point here is f of a. Whatever we get when we plug a into our function gives us f of a over here. Same thing if we follow b up to meet the graph like this, and then we come over here until we meet the y-axis, this point here along the y-axis is f of b. What the intermediate value theorem tells us is that the function must assume every single value between a and b. So all of these values in here on this range have to be on the graph of the function. So what it says is if I name a point, we'll call it f of c, a point in between f of a and f of b, it has to be in between these two. But if it's a point on the y-axis in between these two called f of c, there must be, there must be, by the theorem, there must be a point on the graph or a point along the x-axis, c, that gives me f of c. So according to the intermediate value theorem, if I have a and f of a, and I have b and f of c, then since the function must assume every value in between f of a and f of b, there has to be a point c here along the x-axis that's between a and b that gives me the value f of c. So if we apply this to our problem, what we see is that we have basically the points here, one and two, and we now know that f of a is negative one and f of b is 15. So what this tells us is f of c, our point here, is zero, the root, right, is zero. The intermediate value theorem tells us that there must be a point c here in between a and b, where the function assumes the value of zero, in other words, f of c. So this is how we use the intermediate value theorem to show that there must be a root of the function in between one and two. And we can, we can indicate that just by saying that f of one is less than zero, and zero, of course, is less than f of two, and the fact that this inequality is true means that there is a root of our function on the interval one to two. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.